um, the, oh, the recording. She's going to talk about our summer courses and the activities that we offer over the summer. Um, get rid of that in case you can see that. It says recording. And um, I'll first talk a bit about Millfield uh, for a few minutes and tell you, for those of you who are not so aware about the school. Um, that's me. I've been here 12 years at Millfield School. I look after all the admissions, recruitment and some other aspects of enterprises at Millfield and what we do. It's always a pleasure to be on a panel with Elaine. It's not my first time. Um, as you can see, uh, this was in 2019. And if you go on a, on a trip with Elaine to Ghana, you never know where you're going to end up. Um, you might find yourself on television. Um, and um, apparently he's quite well known, I think, at Elaine. It's in, um, that's not me, obviously, well known. Well, I might be more well known in Accra now. I don't know. Um, or you might find yourself on radio. Um, so I've been all around the, the hot spots and highlights of, uh, of Ghana Broadcasting. And now I can tell you a bit more about Millfield itself. So Millfield uh, was founded in 1935. Um, we've got a real mix of our students and that diversity of where they come from is really important to us. It's been part of our founding heritage and in place uh, in all of the 90 years that we've been around. We are located in the Southwest. So we're below Bath and Bristol, um, and we're in a beautiful part of the world in Somerset, uh, where the weather is always lovely, it's sunny outside at the moment, never rains here. Um, it does rain a little bit, but um, we're in a lovely part of the world. And those of you familiar, there's a festival that goes on in, uh, later this month called Glastonbury. And Glastonbury's a little town. We're actually about seven miles away from where the festival occurs. And there's a very famous hill called Glastonbury Tor. Uh, and a tor is a British name for a sort of natural mound. And there's a church on the top. And Millfield Prep School is just next to Glastonbury. Um, and Millfield School is near the town of Street, which was founded from the Clarks family, very much the founders of that. And between all this acreage, if you add it all together with our other campuses as well, we are over 500 acres. We're bigger than Monaco, which is my latest statistic, which I'd like to share. So give you some idea of scale of what uh, we have. Um, Milford Prep is a beautiful setting. Um, it's uh, an area that's close to Jodie's heart, an alumni of uh, Milford uh, Prep and senior, but she loved it when she was there. And um, it's, in a, it's a lovely location. And for a prep school, it is extremely well equipped and well with lots of lovely facilities. Milford Senior School, you can't, that picture doesn't really do it justice in terms of the scale and size of what we have. Um, but it's a 260 acre site and the parkland and trees make it absolutely stunning. Um, our boarding facilities are quite new, quite modern. We have um, houses like this that were built in um, about 18, 19 years ago and they were brought all on site. They're well equipped um, and rooms of two, um, possibly a three, but really small rooms and, and a single room for six upper six formers. Um, we do have slightly older houses like this one. This is King Weston. It's a historic building as well. Got a mansion and it's out near our football pitch and, and a golf course. Oh, that's the video. Um, now I've got some sound here. You can't hear that. So I'm going to mute it. I'm going to keep talking. This gives you some idea of the concepts. So you've got the prep school as well as the senior school in these pictures you should be seeing. And um, Small classes, average class size of 12, 14 maximum. We use iPads. We're a, um, an iPad-friendly school and have been for over 12 years. And we've got a music concert hall. Milford's not known for sport, but our music, our dance, our drama, our co-curricular are very, very important to us as part of our programme. But we are very lucky with having outstanding sports reputation and facilities. And one of the key reasons why we're so successful at that is our coaching programme. And the fact we have dedicated coaches. Um, so we're not reliant on people like me as the amateur keen historian who would run out of, um, well, not amateur, a history teacher who would run out at a lunchtime and suddenly run out of games or activities. We have dedicated coaching right across the year. Um, but I said our art, our drama, um, we've got a TV studio. We are very creative in all our performances. We can build a car, the catering car club. Um, and we had horses right from our foundation. We've had... Um, uh, the very first sort of uh, few years. Boarding facilities are outstanding. Uh, it's a happy, friendly, vibrant school and crucially a full boarding school. And that's really important for students who are traveling around the world. That's Glastonbury tour looking out across that landscape. So I said we were founded in 1935. Our very first students came from India. That's where our, our foundation was um, and arrived with uh, the first headmaster, Jack Mayer. Um, we are, as I said, very much a full boarding school. We are 80% British, 
20% international from 70 different countries, um, no more than about 25, 30 from any country. In fact, Kenyans are one of our biggest nationality groups now, uh, 29 Kenyans. And of that 80% British, 20% are expats. That is, they are British living overseas. So 250 British overseas, 250 international, uh, 500 children get on a plane to come to us. We are very geared up for the full border. Um, we don't do lots of exiat. Um, our boarding houses don't empty at weekends. We are a busy, vibrant place. Our students come from around the world. Um, so that mix, as I mentioned, is, is really diverse. And um, we uh, very much enjoy that. Um, we like that variety of people. And you can see these are British who live overseas as well as those who are national. So outstanding in our departments, a global context. Um, I'll come back to the connectivity of our OM society, um, but we're very much a uh, route, although in Somerset, a global setting. Our curriculum is broad and balanced right across all of the years. We offer 28 different GCSEs um, and 26 A-level courses. We have some BTEC courses um, and we're an SAT centre as well. And uh, a lot of our students go on to study overseas. Uh, I'm going to go on to this slide quickly. In other universities, so uh, US universities, 15% run study in US universities, as well as universities in other locations and the UK. Um, we were a big school, and that sometimes means people are misunderstood. They think we're all about sport and academic. We would defer, basically, um, that's very much not true. In fact, if you look at our results, our top 100 students last year um, received 65% A star to A, and A star to B was 94%. We're just bigger. We go on. We're a slightly bigger school. We know that our top 150 will do really well, our top 200 will do well, and our top 250, there'll be some there we might struggle a bit. We knew that. And they joined and were set and banded and streamed accordingly. So we get very strong grades. We are very much a uh, school. Academics come first and foremost. But we pride ourselves on our co curricula. Our sport is excellent. Um, and I know it's synonymous with Millfield. Uh, we've been to over 10 years, the top sports school, by, rated by um, the Sports School Journal magazine, I think it is. Um, we've got an Olympic legacy, which is enviable, uh, and a wide range of people who have, I think we now I think we've already got about 10 who've been selected already for the um, Olympics this coming up in the summer in France some of them quite come recent, come quite late in their qualifications we've just got a Bermuda and Emma Harvey to qualify for Bermuda to swim and you can see in the Commonwealth Games in 22 we had 24 athletes and a number of coaches as well um, who achieved great things and our alumni though is diverse it's not just um, sport it's music it's uh, politicians we've got six former MPs we've got uh, band members, we've got actresses and actors. Um, it's really wide. There's Lando Norris, obviously, did quite well. Almost won the Grand Prix in Canada um, yesterday. So, Elaine, that's my whistle stop tour um, of Millfield. Um, at, was that okay for you, Elaine? That was absolutely fun. I never knew that Ella came to your school because her mum used to make birthday cakes for my children. There you go. Small world. Small world. Very small one. No, that was brilliant, James. I, I learned quite a few things that I didn't know about Millfield during that presentation. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Jodie now, who's going to give us a presentation about what you can do with your children during the summer. Perfect. Thanks, Elaine. And I'm going to echo what James said. Thanks so much for the opportunity tonight uh, to show off uh, our facilities. Um, so, as James said, and just gave you an overview of the school, um, I work for the Enterprises team, which is the commercial arm of the school. Uh, and we um, welcome an English language holiday programme uh, during the summer for um, six to four weeks, depending on whether that's the prep school or the senior campus. So we are um, opening our prep school for the first time post COVID this uh, July. So we're really excited to have that back opening again. And then the senior programme for the six weeks, as we've had now for quite a few years. So what I'm going to do is just go through the, the program with you just so you can have an, a, an overview to what this this is. This is a, a great opportunity for your students to have maybe a, a pre-taste of what a, a boarding school might have to offer or um, you know if somebody's looking to try Millfield out to see if it's something where their students might your, your children might want to come and study in the future. This is a great opportunity for them to come and try Millfield or if Milford isn't something, but you just want your little taste of it for, you know, a two, four, six week program in the summer 
customer, this is a great course for, for maybe them to come and try. So as we say, we, we run the program in July and August. We've got our uh, prep campus, um, or as we refer to it as Glastonbury, um, for the 8 to 11-year-olds, and then the senior campus, which we refer to as Street, for the 12 to 16-year-olds. So just to uh, introduce the program through to you, uh, very much uh, uh, about the, the history of, of course, the school. Um, and we have actually been welcoming our um, an English language program to the school now for over 50 years. So uh, there has been the holiday opportunity there uh, to mirror the school itself. So it's been a, a, a part of our sort of ethos for, for years. So within the... Um, Glastonbury campus, we offer either a two or four week program starting this summer from the 6th of July for two weeks or the 20th of July for two weeks or the 6th of July for four weeks. Um, this is a fully uh, residential campus and the prices that you see there uh, include your accommodation, include your um, activities in the afternoon, your academic Piece, your social program uh, and as I show you the uh, timetable shortly you'll see how that sort of breaks down as they're with us. So some lovely snaps as well, just as the prep score, I know you, James shows you just a few a moment, but this gives you a bit of a snapshot of what our students do when they're on site with us. It very much mirrors the uh, the school with all of the activities that we, we offer in the afternoon. Because we have such a wealth of activities, your students during, uh, our, your children during the time with us in the, in the afternoons will go out to try those. They'll be able to do horse riding, they'll be able to try um, basketball, they'll be able to do dance, swimming, um, they can just try all of those activities when they're with us in the afternoons. So to give you a snapshot of what a, a typical week within uh, MULHT would look like, so this is again for the 8 to 11 year olds, so it's slightly different than it is for the slightly older ones and I'll show you that in just a few moments. So each morning uh, would be their um, academic program, so what we do is have academic explorers, um, this is uh, an opportunity for uh, the students to try a taste of the uh, program that our Key Stage 3, Key Stage 4 would be doing at uh, the prep school when they were with us, so they'll be trying the English, the math, the history, the sciences. Um, when they arrive, they get a, 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 a sort of examination just to sort of get the feeling of what their English levels are. So they're matched with students that are to the same ability within their classes. So each morning, as you see through Sunday through to uh, Friday, they've got their lessons. Then in the afternoon, they have their activity, which at the uh, prep school is a multi-activity course. So this is an opportunity, as I say, for them to try all those amazing facilities that we have at the school. So one day they'll be doing pony club, the next week they'll be doing climbing, swimming, then they'll be off to the arts centre to do some arts, cookery, pottery, um, you name it, they'll be able to try it when they're on, their, on site. So if it, a student's very much sort of looking to really experience what the school has to offer. Then in the evenings, we have uh, um, our house hour this is an opportunity for them to reach it back out to home so it's when the times they can go and have uh, some time on the telephone with mum and dad the reason why we do it at this point of the day is for those smaller ones just to sort of separate that sort of um, homesickness so they have time to reach out to mum and dad but they've got their evening activities to go out and do and then uh, until they go back off to bed later on so it's that sort of time for them to sort of separate that 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 time from talking to mum and dad to when they go to bed each evening there's a big social program so that could be a color run that could be a talent competition that could be going over to the senior school uh, and joining in with the with uh, the the stu students over there and we also then do a half day and a full day excursion they are very very much rotated around the southwest so we do things like wookie hole caves we go to we are curious which is like a science um museum up in bristol we go to bath we go to go ape we go to uh longleat but they're all very southwest type taste um experiences so opportunity for them to go out to the local area and experience what we've got to offer in the southwest as james said it's a beautiful area a lot of people in the uk come to the southwest for their holidays and of course that uh gets the opportunity for them to go out and experience of what we have locally so just onto the program. So as I say, each morning it's the academic program. So this is our academic explorers. This is available for all of the four weeks for, for the eight to 11 year olds. And as I say, this is for them to taste the curriculum. So what our students would be doing during uh, term time, these students will be doing when they're on like little snippets of those sort of mm -hmm. um, maths, sciences, <laughs> the yeah, histories, the geography. Yeah. It's an opportunity for them to experience that when they're with us. And then as I say, the multi-activity sheet each afternoon so arts basketball cookery climbing dance and so on and so forth a really good opportunity for them to do that 
as I say, full social programme. So give you a bit of snippets of what that sort of fun activities look like each afternoon. Um, boarding houses, all of our boarding houses that we use for MEHD are on, on site boarding houses. We don't utilise any of the ones that are off site. So the, the, the boarding houses are with reach for those students within a few moments walk. Um, so they are not leaving the campus and left they're going for an excursion. So uh, and of course, utilising the same boarding houses that our students would use during the term time. We can, of course, organise travel. So anybody who wants to fly into Heathrow, Gatwick or Bristol, of course, they can fly in and we can organise transfers. They're £275 in turn. Uh, we just ask them to select their flight times between 8am and 6pm in the evening. And then we can go on a group transfer with all of our other um, uh, uh, students. So that's our prep uh, site, or as we refer to it as our Glastonbury site. We then have the senior school or street campus, so bear with me. Hopefully you can all see that. So we run a slightly different program because it runs for six week program here. So you could again still do the two weeks or the four weeks as you can at the Glastonbury campus. But there is also an option to do a three or a six week program within this as well and a five week program. So it's just broken down into those weeks subject to your holiday requirements and when your students are off and you'll see the costings down through here as well. So a few snippets as well to give you an overview of what the wonderful facilities as James showed you some of them earlier. But again, all of our students are taking advantage just as they were be a term time student, they would be able to utilise the facilities for their activities and, and things in the afternoon, all of the academic options as well. Very similar as it is for the prep uh, school, it just runs a slightly longer day. So it starts at uh, 7.15 and runs through to uh, 10.30. So it's just a slightly longer day. Again, the 15 hours of English learning each, each morning. There are um, activity sessions in the afternoon. The evening social program each evening with a half day and full day excursion. The only separation for this one than there is for the prep school is on a Friday because they're teenagers, we give them a little bit of a light, slight, slightly more start and they start at uh, 9.45 with a wake up into brunch and Friday's a little bit more of their sort of relaxed day where they get to have their, just do their activities. They get a bit of time off in their house in the, evening, in the afternoon to do sort of just have a bit of a break and a bit of more of informal time as well. So to talk about the academic programme, it is separate. We get to choose between three options at the uh, street campus. So you've got academic English, which is available for your certificate B1 or above. This is great for any student that is looking to potentially study in the UK. It's a great taster of what that academic programme would be like if there were a student coming to st study at a boarding school, considering Millfield, considering uh, studying in the UK. It gives you again, again those taste of key stage three, key stage four, maths, English, geography, history, sciences, so on and so forth. So they would be able to have that sort of taste of those different um, academic options uh, when they're with us. General English is available for all entry levels of English. Um, there's a pre-assessment before they would arrive with us for that. So this is, um, again, they would then be classed on according to their, their level of English. The great thing about this course is the end of week two, four and six, they have the opportunity to do a verbal examination. It's a Trinity London examination. So it's a recognised, international recognised qualification. As I say, it's a verbal examination. So they would be entered in at a grading that they um, is is to their level and of course if they're past that they then get the certificate to say they've passed that and this is something they can take away and say that they've actually achieved this when they were on site with us so it's a really good op option to sort of have something to recognize that their time at the school and their achievements they've done when they were with us if they are doing generally english as an additional they can actually increase those 15 hours of learning up to uh, 23 hours and they can choose one of our english plus which on the different weeks they do um, English literature, presentation skills or debating skills. So this is an opportunity for them to extend those in, that English programme uh, in the afternoon. The reason why we only have that as part of general English is within academic English and global studies, which are third option I'll explain to you shortly. Those those presentation skills, debating skills, etc., are in within those courses. So this would be uh, not to their, those higher standards. So if you are to that higher standard, so certificate of B2 or above, we have our global studies, which is available for the 14 to 16 year olds. So it is that slightly sort of older uh, class of uh, student. 
This is done more like a university style. So this is in a lecture theatre. There could be up to 60 students per class. But this is where they get to do their debating. So this is where they get to do their case studies and their presentations. They, for example, last summer, they went to our local food bank. They spoke to the charity about... Um, uh, why they were there, the cost of living crisis, what sourced them to go to the food bank. It's uh, They spoke to the charity about how they source their food, how they distribute that. And then they came back, they, dis they um, debated about it within their classrooms. They presented their findings. So it's a really good opportunity for those sort of higher level uh, students that are looking for that next level um, of learning. So that's the three options that you have for an academic program. And you need to choose that on application for the duration of the time that you're with us in, in the summer. Activity is slightly different. The great thing about the activities is you can change these weekly here. So in the uh, street campus, you can actually change your activity per week. So say you were coming for two weeks, weeks one and two, and you're into your arts, you could look at doing maybe art for week one, uh, and then maybe you wanted to do something like golf on week two. Subject to availability, you can then select the different um, activities per afternoon. So how long you're with us, you can change that as the weeks go through. And you can see from that wonderful list there, we have things like arts, basketball, cookery, design and technologies, football, music, outdoor adventurers, performing arts, horse riding, sports. It's a, an extensive list. The little um, stars here just represent uh, if there's a slight cost for those ones. And the, the costs are listed at the bottom and the weeks represent the weeks that these these activities are available. So if you were, say, coming just for two weeks, you would look to the weeks that you were looking to choose and then choose your activities um, on application. Again, these must be chosen prior to arrival um, uh, uh, for the duration of week one and week two. But if you are a mad footballer and you absolutely, is also a uh, mad footballer, you, you're coming for weeks five and six and you want to do football for both weeks, that's absolutely fine. You can do that as well. So you don't have to change them if you don't want to. But this is something you choose with mum and dad on your application along with your academic and then your activity program prior to arrival. We then have an hour club each afternoon. So the great thing about the club is it's actually something the student has a bit of control on. So when they're actually on site with us, they make a really good new friend. They decide they both love chess and they want to go to the chess club. They can do that each afternoon. There's an hour um, club session that they can go to and they get to choose that when they're with us. It's a little bit of control that they can have. So the social programme, as I said to you at the prep school, also mirrors this in as well at the senior, senior campus. This is a full programme, so it does a half day and a full day excursion, again, where they go out to local attractions in around the southwest, Bath, Oxford. Uh, we go to Lyme Regis. We go to up the famous Glastonbury tour that uh, James was talking about earlier. But there's also the on-campus uh, social programme. So each evening we do a fun activity, whether that be in-house or maybe out in the grounds. You can see here there's a Millbury Festival. It's taking the theme of the Glastonbury Festival. It's for then the students who have been doing the arts and doing, doing the singing, doing the music, can actually perform uh, to everybody on stage in our, in our Millbury Festival. Uh, tent we have street food everybody's out in the grounds it's really good fun we have a, a silent disco where everybody has their, their headphones on and they're all dancing under the trees we have a enchanted forest where we have toffee apples and sweet corn and fire throwers and they again have a party underneath the trees so it's a real full social program a great opportunity for those students to get together and make some really good friends get some memories for, for future years. Campus life, again, the accommodation is all of the boarding houses on site. So we utilise our, our, our boarding houses on site. They are girls' houses and boys' houses, and that is split by age. We have the younger ones in certain houses and the older ones in others. And then there's boys' houses and the girls' houses. Um, we try to always mix nationalities unless there is a request from home that they are coming with their friend and they would like to, to share a room or if there is a sort of a, a requirement, they would like a single single room. We will always see if we can fill those. If not, we always try and mix the nationalities. So there's that real opportunity for those students to practice and, and, and talk with other students. And then the travel, again, the same as what we discussed before. So we can organise our group tra uh, transfers from uh, Heathrow, Gatwick, um, Bristol, or not so relevant for yourselves, but St Pancras train station if anybody is travelling from Europe. So, yeah. so there we go. Hopefully that's given you a bit of insight to our summer programmes. 
Thank you so much, Jody. Um, and we have a mix of parents on here. So some parents are on here and they are based in London. So they can just get the train or drive right, up yeah. to Somerset. Um, so thank you for that. Now, before I start asking the questions, there are two amazing mums on here who are already <laughs> at the school. One is Sarah Duncan. Hi, Sarah. Please, can you unmute and tell us about how your daughter has loves the school? Like, I'm not pushing the school or anything, but um, just tell us about your experience. And then Olivia is on as well. I want you to come on and talk about your son. Hi, Elaine. Hi, everybody. Um, my daughter, my eldest, is in year 10 in Millfield. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me. Okay. Can you? Okay. So clearly I'm a happy parent. My second is starting in September of this year. Um, Mealfield provides a variety of needs for different children. It is a one stop for me, what it is that I'm looking for, for myself and my children and my family. So we're happy. <laughs> Needless to say, I wouldn't be smiling and I wouldn't be here if we weren't happy um, with Mealfield. So, yeah, questions, please let me know. I'm so glad. I remember when Sarah came to me, she was just like, I don't really know, I don't really know, I don't really know. And then when we got the all clear for her first daughter, and I'm excited that your second daughter is starting again. It looks like Indeed. we're starting a legacy here, James. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and so James, I'm hopefully, should be coming to Ghana this year. So we'll make sure that we look after him really well, won't we, Sarah? When he comes. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Well, and and will. I was lucky to be in London with Sarah. We were meeting at our, we had a, um, a gathering for parents. In fact, it's one of the nice things. I hope you enjoyed it. So I know you left in the pouring rain. It hopefully got you back in your taxi okay. But we are very conscious that we have our, the community of people across Britain as well. So not only do we do the functions when we're overseas, but we like to hold them. So we hold a reception in London this week for around about 60 families um, really based in London themselves. And it was great to chat to Sarah there. So um, Likewise. nice to see you again. Nice to see you, James. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Olivia, are you on the call? And your son says a, the same name, different spelling as Jody. Olivia, are you on the call? You are... Hello, everyone. Hello. Hiya. Hi. So I've about got your son, his first year. Uh, yes, um, Jody started Millfield last year, September year seven, going to year eight this September. Um, it's been amazing. Um, his confidence. Uh, we, he started in tears, definitely first time leaving home, but the confidence he loves it, everything about Millfield. But one of the things he's athletic, but the opportunities. He's now playing football. He's um done rugby, um he he's done basketball, and um, before going to Millfield, all he did was athletics, high jump, um hundred meters, two hundred meters. But the opportunities that he's been exposed to, um for this season, he won uh, the best athletes for uh, Somerset. It's just been amazing, and um as parents, we're proud. Thank you, Elaine, and we wouldn't say anything bad. It's been amazing news all through so that's what I would say thank you so touched when I hear stuff like this thank you so much Sarah thank you so You're much welcome. Olivia yeah. oh you know you can you can pay me later I'll you know get the invoice of you but no but actually um thank you so much and I think the parents are testament of what an amazing school um, Millfield is and and I've been told by other parents that it's such a big school I remember the first time that I visited Millfield James said to me I, I, I will I will take you around in a golfing buggy but he never did but I'm just saying I'm putting him out there um but that's make you walk big... it Elaine that's not fair <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. Um, but that's that's how vast the school is and I think the vastness of the school talks about also the vastness of opportunities that are there and so one of the questions that I had come through from a parent was how do you how do you um how can I put this well so how do you um 
get the children to mix with the different diversities? How does Millfield handle that? Children that are coming from different diversities and different walks of life, how does Millfield do that? That's a great question. I did see, I think it's the one from Anita, is it, as well, that yeah. you've got on the chat there, Lane. It's a great mm -hmm. question. Um, I find sometimes other schools almost artificially go to great lengths to try and foster um, situations where children are mixing. And, you know, we all know, and if you've got teenage children, you'll definitely know, is that you, you can't um, sometimes create situations artificially. You have to allow young people to make friends and feel comfortable by themselves and with themselves. And quite simply, the way we do it is by our very much our, our student pop body, by the people themselves. We are extremely lucky to have, as I sort of talked about in the presentation, this um, delicate balance of where people come from and, and having a proportionality that is broad. And you come to Somerset, uh, I'm sure there was a family I saw today, as a case study, the families I've seen today, a, a, a lovely girl, the parents who are based in Singapore, French father, British mother, based in Singapore. Um, then uh, another super family I, um, I had later on in the afternoon, who just driven down from Croydon. She's actually um, was born in New Jersey. She has a Nigerian passport. She lived for three years in Ghana. We came in chatting about her when she was younger. And then she's been at school in Croydon. Her father was tickled pink as she sort of sat in the chair and said, um, I feel like I'm an American. And he said, you've been living in Croydon for the last, you know, sort of eight, ten years. But the point was that she had that sort of internationalism. She's going up to Washington where her aunt is in a couple of weeks' time. And she's joining us in the sixth form this year. And uh, the final family were two boys from Calcutta. Um, absolutely lovely boys, really, really bursting enthusiasm, as mentioned, twins. And I just got to the end of that day and I'm thinking, look at the variety of the people I've sat chatting to. Look at the way I've been trotting. I was saying to um, Aggie, who was the first girl coming from, uh, from Singapore, and I was saying, gosh, you know, by the time I then got on to Angie, he was joining us from um, Croydon via the USA. Um, she, I said, you two would get on really well. And actually, look at your your sort of perspectives are very different. So how do we go about getting those to mix? It's going to happen by the fact we have a diverse intake of students. We we do have an international society. We do have um, a consciousness that when students first arrive, they need that extra time to settle in. We have a very thorough induction um, uh, process, which is more than just like the first day. It goes on with touch points over the first three weeks, in fact. We are very conscious that language and use of words and language are sometimes very different from what people are used to in terminology. We use these phrases in schools like exiats, um, quite archaic terms at times, and even just the language that's used in assemblies and things. We are conscious about making language clear and plain. We're very conscious about making sure that everybody feels comfortable and they're coming from different cultural backgrounds. And in fact, it's one of the initiatives of a girl you mentioned earlier, you know, Elaine, at Eden, who um, had been part of a group that had formed as a student initiative, as led by the captains of school, the heads of school. And she was one of those members um, who formed and wrote up their own charter as students were joining new to the school about what they felt we should all be agreeing to. And it spread right across the whole of the sixth form. And um, so we're very big on student voice. We're very big on her pupil perspective. We want to hear what they believe and feel is important. We are not a top down, you must do what we say school. We're about making sure that every person has that say, but comes together and are able to be themselves, not just on the one or two. We do have a thriving international society who does a function once a term. And that's all very nice. It's the day to day relationships made in a house, in a community of people. When you live together, you know people really well. And that student led positivity is something that we embrace and champion. And we make sure where people are unhappy, we're going to try and tackle them. I don't know if that's answered fully the question, Elaine, but does that go some way to it? I think that has answered the question. Anita, has that answered your question? Well, yeah, she's written in the chat, actually. More than, yeah. Thank you so much. That's really good. I love the idea of the student charter and the voices because, yeah, it's for the students, isn't it? So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank Come and see us, Anita. Yeah, Anita, Anita's got a daughter who she's looking at, you know, year seven, 
Um, so I'm sure she might come, but it's her only daughter, so she will struggle with boarding. Um, and she's a, a single mum, so she she that is her little handbag, as they say. Yeah. Um, Anita, they change as they get older. Well, they'll just let you know. Yeah, she's seven now, so let me let me start preparing now. <laughs> Long time. Long time. Yeah, maybe next summer when she's eight, she can come and give her a two-week try at our emulation yeah. course because that would give a real insight for her trying that. She'd have the academic explorers, so it would be an opportunity to taste what that, that curriculum would be like at the prep school. She'd experience all those those facilities. She's got she'd a have big to offer. grin right now looking at me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a really good way of coming and trying it as well. Mm. So, yeah, it's a really good one. But it is boarding for those two weeks. So it's immersing yourself into that culture of what that's like. And we really echo all of the school's ethos uh, in our summer program as well. Um, so it is very much about the, the student voice, like like Jane was, James was saying. The, you know, we we everybody there is new. Day one, everybody arriving is new. So it's not like, you know, you've got sort of those mergings of, of old and new. Uh, everybody's arriving. We give those opportunities for that social program for them to make friends and, and make some real memories. But it's a really good way to try it. So maybe next year when she's eight, it might be a good opportunity to come and try it. Absolutely. And I can actually see Anita's daughter doing it. because She's very big on um, drama and music. So she would definitely have a great time at Millfield. Um, Anita, we've just got to prepare you and get you ready. We've got a year, so you should be okay by next year, okay? She's so another question somebody asked is, she's really sorry, she hasn't done her homework, but what's the earliest that a child can board? Yes, absolutely. Um, age of seven or eight um, is going to be the earliest. We have a lovely prep school. We mentioned you know, you can see the recording and, and uh, if you want to catch up, just missed the start of what we were presenting on. But the prep school is a fantastic uh, school. It's very much age appropriate. In fact, we run that all the way through about being age appropriate. But you can board from age of seven or eight. And there's a little bit more flexibility. We realise that, you know, for some families, weekly boarding may suit them a little bit younger. Um, and then that changes a bit as we go through to the top end of the prep school and into senior school. Thank you so much. Um... Jody, what's the earliest that people can come to um, have the, the the summer school experience? So from age eight, so um, they have to be eight years old in order to come to our um, MHT course. So they would have to be eight before they arrive. But they could okay. be eight the day before. That's fine. That's but yeah, fine. <laughs> so um, eight years old through to 16. I did want to also ask, because another parent had asked me this morning that um, her husband is doing... Um, doing some construction work um like a development in Somerset and she I think her children are slightly younger than um eight is there something that she can do on a daily basis at Millfield absolutely or so yeah absolutely is so enterprises as I said earlier it's the commercial arm so what we also have as our uh, courses um mm -hmm. so these are a mix of just childcare courses so we have uh, for example our um multi activities which is uh, available for 3 weeks this summer and it's just a day so basically my little boy who's a student actually at the prep school he's going mm -hmm. to go for a week and he'll arrive at nine o'clock in the morning he'll for an hour he'll do cooking and then he'll go swimming and then he'll do basketball and then he'll do uh rounders and then he'll play cricket and then he'll go down and do the pony center um, they get fed and watered through the day as well so that's a sort of childcare option for you we do football mm. camps as well and then we also do some residential camps so there are swimming camps uh, rugby um, hockey athletics uh, where there are that sort of more driving people who are looking to really improve their skill set um, so our uh, for example our swimming camp is with Jazz Carling who's an ex-Olympia um, our hockey campus with Susanna Townsend, who is an, uh, an ex-hockey player. So these are courses really to enhance sort of that sort of development of those those key sports. So we do offer both both options. Brilliant. Um, we've had another question, James. Maybe this is for you. Could be for Jodie as well. About um, if I've got a child who has a passion for football, um, how does um, Milford help position themselves? or position the child um, in terms of football? Yeah, of course. So football is one of our most popular sports. We do 27 sports well um, and properly. 
Um, probably in terms of participation, about 350 out of 1,350 pay football. Um, now, those who go on and play professionally is very, very small across the whole world, across the whole country. Tyron Mings has done that with us, as well as a few others who are playing professionally. Mm -hmm. Tyron probably is the most obvious, famous um, alumni to have gone and played. Um, I think what we're about is rather than going on an academy route, which you might do if someone wants to play football, and then they go through that and might get turfed off um, when they're sort of 16, 17, and suddenly uh, they've lost their whole focus. You're one injury away from um, you know being dropped or you know you just haven't quite made the grade. And that can leave young people really bereft because they've lost that sort of purpose. We are very good and, and really in the top one or two schools in the country who are schools who are very good at football, but we're a school. Academics come first and alongside. You're not making the compromise. And also from the social point of view as well, um, you're not going to be just on a one track route where, you know, it can be pretty brutal, I think. So um, we are very good at schoolboy rugby. We regularly, there's two competitions, Independent Schools Cup and English Schools Cup. And we regularly in the final of those sort of two. So if you have someone who's interested in pursuing a football career, wonderful. But let's keep the academic side up alongside. Yeah, and there are a couple of mums in here who've had this conversation with me today. Um, and it can be quite worrying. You know, I've got a godson who has just been signed up for the in England under 15 football. But like you rightly said, the one injury away from them scrapping you. Um, um, and so thank you for that, James. Um, another question is, what is the food like? Um, what is the food like at Millfield, the school, and also Enterprises? Yeah. I'll do the first bit and let Jodie stay to follow on with it. I actually, I like taking families to lunch. I took one of the families today to lunch um, uh, because it's a nice, nice way when they're travelling and it's a good little bit of way down to Somerset. It's nice to feed them before they're disappearing off. And I like, really like taking families in so they can see the food. They get a chance to actually, you know, try and uh, taste before you buy, literally. And who are also, um, they get to see about the school, you know, actually see the people in there eating. But I think it's good, um, and I think the children on the whole do. There'll always be someone who moan about. And food is a contentious topic, you know. But we are global in what the sort of food we do. It's uh, there's always a world food bar, so it's not always just shepherd's pie or um, fish fingers or something. We don't do the fish fingers ever, I think. No, there is never a world fish fingers. <laughs> food bar. So it is, it is a real mix, and and actually for school food, I think it's pretty good. And Jody, pretty much the same in enterprise, I think. Absolutely is. So, um, I mean, the food is outstanding at the school for a school option. Uh, we're very lucky as staff to be able to enjoy that every day. Um, and uh, we the, 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 the menu just continues through uh, into enterprises time. So uh, it's the same catering team. Um, it's the same uh, team that deliver the food, that cook the food uh, to our term time students as they do our holiday courses. Um, so it's this, this really you really wouldn't see a change through from one to the other we consistently offer the stew the hot options the the mix of the vegetarians the vegans the the meat options the potatoes and so on the big salad cart the world food bar the delicious desserts it's all just transitions right the way through you don't see a, a break from one to the other i love that um and it's a global menu however i didn't hear you mention jollof rice i think you should add jollof rice it's on to tomorrow it. it's on tomorrow then it's on, it's, on, it's on Tuesdays. It's on Tuesdays. Wow, I must come. Listen, guys, a school that has jollof rice, I think you have to consider it very, very much so. Very much so, very much so. And I think another question um, that we have is um, how do you handle student conflict? Thank you. Good, 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 good question. I've just got, uh, is that Ruth on? Um, yeah, I just muted her. There we go. Um, yeah, conflict, you know, look, anybody, when you live together, um, you know, everybody has ups and downs. And it's one of the things that we, um, you know, we all learn to live with. That's one of the great things about making those lifelong relationships in boarding. It, and you really do know people well. If you've ever been on holiday with someone or on a, on a tour or been away, my goodness, you know those people well. And it's wonderful when you see them again, isn't it? Because you have that relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So young people are on a journey, you know, um, teenagers um, make mistakes because the risk factor within a teenage brain we know isn't fully formed until you're 23. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I, I regularly say, you know, to families now, and we're, we're chatting that, you know, um, when I was 17, I, I, I probably thought it was absolutely fine to get into a car with um, my 17 year old friend who's just passed his driving test at 1 p.m. after coming back from a party on a cold and frosty night. Somehow, it doesn't something I would do now. Um, that's because my risk register is slightly different. But teenagers do have a very different approach to what they see, you know, is that sort of risk reward. And in the same way as they make mistakes by by doing some things, we have to help protect and, and guide and, and, and allow them to learn from that. The same way is that young people make mistakes in terms of their um, relationships and particularly online now. I mean, when you've given people something as a phone that you can just type something in straight away. I think this generation of digital natives who have grown up and those of you who've got children probably from the age of even nine, 10, and certainly through the teenage years, I think they're more savvy about realizing if they write something, it can upset people. Um, we, it's very hard to unpick things that go on that you can't see. And we spend a lot of time educating about what you put on online because that's where a lot of conflict can come, a lot of hurt can come and thoughtlessness because again, people who live in the moment, they don't realize, they'll often say, I didn't mean it or I was just joking, you know, it was just banter. And, and that's really educating people that was banter to one person can be really hard and affecting to someone else. Genuine mm. physical conflict is all very rare. I mean, that, and that's easiest to deal with in a school. If someone mm. bops someone else, that's easy because it's just so clear cut. So I think the conflict is of two levels. One is when it's actually quite spiteful or mean, and that can often be online. And we have to talk people through that and show what it is. And actually, young people are very good at calling each other out now. They are very good. That's something that we are particularly you know, important about. The headmaster, Gavin Hawkins, has got a very uh, clear line. He uses in open days. He says about being kindness, being a thing about being Milford. And sometimes being kind is saying to your friend, that isn't something you should be doing. And you can express kindness, not just by being all oh, very nice to you all the time, but going, that isn't right. And I think that's a very interesting way of approaching the way we look Ooh. at conflict and going to people, this isn't right, reflecting that back, mediating, it's going to happen in any environment. And we'll be naive if we sat here and said nobody ever is having conflicts. But at the same time, if we work it through, and by the time we get to the summer months, people get here, you know, um, you, you, will, you will be better and stronger for having gone through it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm getting lots of messages, James, about how people love you. You understand the assignment um, and you answer very well and your, your language shows a lot of empathy and you completely understand how children function in an environment like this because a lot of parents on here are very um concerned about boarding school this is new for them they you know they haven't experienced that before and um some parents who went to boarding school in ghana let's say their their, their experience is very very different and um you know being a boarding school mum myself um i can sing to the hills about boarding school but you know and and you're absolutely right children do change as they get older I went to an event on Saturday and they said how do how do children spell love p-a-p-l-a-y and I said trust me when they get to teenage years it's spelled m-o-n-e-y it's totally different and so um I I, I want to applaud you and and I want to applaud Jody as well for coming in here and 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 just enlightening a lot of the parents on here i think this is something that we have to do again most definitely because you. one you know I, I i don't believe in one hit wonders i i believe in building relationships and um another question that one parent asked was about your um scholarships and bursaries pro program and i know that bursaries might change slightly because of the possible incoming policy um but I I know that one thing about Milford is they do give opportunities to the right children. Um, and so I'll just leave you to speak a little bit on that, Jane. No, absolutely. I mean, look, we've we've always been um, a school which is one to support the mix. And we do have a genuine mix of where people come from, not only around the world, but also um, in terms of their backgrounds. And mm -hmm. we give, you know, support of about six and a half million a year to enable people to come to Millfield. Um, we can't do that for everybody, <laughs> just we would love to. Mm -hmm. We realise that there is uh, an expense and a huge commitment that parents make. And I think, Elaine, as you touch on a little bit there, 
one of the most things that I found is, and everyone's got a political view, you know, on, on whether we should or shouldn't be, you know, putting on a VAT on our fees. But mm -hmm. there's one single thing that stands out to me, and that is every single parent in this country is a taxpayer has paid their for their child to go to a state education and they are not taking that up and they are saving the taxpayer at least seven and a half to eight thousand pounds per child and to then come in and say we're going to then tax you again seems to be like missing the point that that's already happened and another very interesting point is that if we were still in the eu it is against eu law to put a tax on health or education so very interesting if we had brexit hadn't happened this actually isn't something that could put through, which is interesting when Keir Starmer was the man proposing that we stay in there. But I get it that charities is hard to understand. Why should an elite private school be one that's got a, you know, why should it be not taxed? Well, and why is it a charity? Well, we are all founded for charitable reasons. You know, there's no money being taken out of this. There's no company that owns Millfield. Um, it all goes back in the school. And believe you me, every penny goes back in for the kids' benefits. Mm -hmm. And we want to maintain our mix and we want to enable students to apply and come on a bursary. Um, we don't want to reduce that amount. Um, we've always had a history of doing it. Um, we don't have a huge foundation behind us. Not many schools do. It's really small. Probably about 10 schools in this country are really wealthy mm -hmm. and awful lot others aren't. So, yeah. yeah, look, we offer scholarships and bursaries. And I can see a question that's I was there was how selective are we, especially accepting kids, especially boarders. Yeah, we have a minimum entry, um, but essentially if people apply in time two years before year nine. Mm -hmm. We do a cap four reasoning test. We do an interview um, and uh, we have a sort of, you know, process of people coming through to it, accept. But mm -hmm. not everyone is a sportsman. Not everyone has to have a scholarship. Not everyone has to have that. Um, and, and we're very good at trying to sort of make sure that everybody wants to hear in the school is equal in terms of where they are. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I've just answered two things in one there for you, Elaine. No, but thank you so much, um, James. Thank you so much, Shodi. Um, we have four minutes left, and if you have a question, please just put it through really, really quickly. Um, and obviously, questions are coming from my phone as well. I have a question. Um, some time ago, I was in a WhatsApp group, and a parent was complaining about how far away the boarding houses are in the school. Um, and, you know, I'm very pragmatic. And so I said, well, if your child missed the school coach, they didn't get up on time. Um, because I, I, I believe that the whole essence of, of boarding school is that you learn to self-regulate, you learn to um, put things in order for yourself and you become quite independent quite early. And so, my question to you is, when I came, obviously, I looked at the the the, the um, year nines. I think you call them the shells. Do you call them shells? Can't remember. Year nine. Year nine. Um, I think shells is a little bit of an oldish term. Exiat and uh, the rest of it. But um, how do you manage teaching the year nines to begin to understand this new routine that they might be used to? Obviously, if they're coming from the prep school or if they're coming from the prep school that was boarding they kind of understand but what about people that are new to boarding no it's great well well you've played into my hands nicely here lane it wasn't on ut deliberately but um 12 years ago there was a perception that millfield we're big and when they feel say we're big they imply it's big and it's scary actually i'll tell you what if you come in new with another uh, you know 100 pupils at year nine or 60 mm -hmm. in year 10 or 150 in the lower six actually it's quite mm -hmm. friendly because they're all coming in new as well. And it's mm -hmm. not so friendly when you join a small school where you're one of the new people and you stand out. I'll tell you, I've worked yeah. in schools like that. So we brought in a year nine program to counter this idea we were big as if that mm -hmm. was scary. So our year nine program, they're in houses right in the middle of the school, boys or girls houses, and mm -hmm. are dedicated just year nines. And therefore they're coming in and enabling them to get used to boarding in an age appropriate environment. They have dedicated staff who are used to dealing with that age group. And, you know, we, we don't do things straight away. So don't go to town in the first year. Now, Street is a very quiet little town. If you want to send your children boarding somewhere, say, come to Street. There's not a lot there. It's the ideal place for you. But in the first term, they never go to Street. In the second term, we start to take them down and show them how they behave when they go to town and where they walk. Mm -hmm. The third term, they get to sign out and go for half an hour in groups of three. They think they're just, you know, amazing. It's all about staggering those right things right ages. And yeah. boarding is that. It's about easing people in. The parents like our year nine program because 
they know they're going to be with people of the same age and, and grouping. Mm -hmm. The boys and girls like it because they get to make friends right across the year group. And if you go into a senior house where you're basically 12 boys or 12 girls in a, you know, in a house, you might get on with those 12 in your year. You might not. We get you a chance to make friendships right across the year. And then for years 10, 11, 12 and 13, for the next four years, you go to your senior house and we'll have a few new ones joining as well at that stage. And we can also try and help the groups and make sure it's the right sorts of people who should be together. So um, that's something we've done deliberately. And do you know what? It works and works really well. Thank you so much. We are at the eight o'clock point. Jody, can we have some final remarks, please? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Elaine, for your time, Stati, and everybody on, on the call. Mm -hmm. um, just anybody who has got any questions about Emulate, she, of course, pop them through to Elaine, and she'll be very happy to ask this question on. We still have availability for this summer, um, so uh, would love the opportunity to, if anybody is considering any summer programmes, uh, we have still, particularly those sort of maybe latter weeks, the five and six, where you could still look to sort of get, get everything plans in place um, to get those students across to try that experience. So we do have that for um, uh, our street campus and um, the, the the weeks three and four are preps campus so if anybody has any students that are interested for this summer would love the opportunity to uh, welcome them and of course into the future years to come so any questions just let Elaine know and she'll ask me and we'll be able to answer those for you. Thank you Jodie. Any last remarks Mr. Mr. Pothol? Uh, Elaine, it's, it's wonderful to be back on the TV with you and um, I'm looking forward to see if we can repeat that in Ghana and um, and Star FM. I like that guy. He was really cool. He had uh, a great chat. Great, great, great. So for those of you on here, if you've got any um, family in Ghana, Neil Field woo, 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 will be coming to Ghana this year. Um, and, and so... You can meet them in person. I'm pretty sure we're going to do more Zoom calls where you can begin to ask um, James questions so that you have a full um, plan of how to get your child into the school. And like he said, if you've got an application form, two years before, please. Please don't give us pressure when it's one year before or six months before because, you know, we can't give out a bed that we do not have. Um, and the same with Jody. Um, if your child is too young to go this year. Anita, I'm calling you out. We're getting Anastasia in for next year, definitely. She's seven. When she's eight, she can go. And you never know, you might, you know, your children might grow up loving Millfield and want to go there and then have their first experience of festival at Glastonbury. Um, you know, I've just gone through the whole festival experience with my, my children and it's, it's interesting. That's all I'm going to say. It's interesting. But um, thank you everybody for being on this call I really really appreciate you and thank you that I know it was such short notice but you came on you represented well done well done to the everything's education community I really appreciate you um, and if you've got any questions pop it in the group and I will ask Jodie and James for you thank you everybody bye thanks for your time bye bye, bye. Thanks, thank, you. thank you thank you